want to welcome you to our online worship service and also those who may be watching uh, in our community. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord, but just like the past couple of weeks, I'm looking at an empty sanctuary that breaks my heart, but I know that you're out there and you're tuned in and you're watching, and we've said this many times, you are the church. Victory Baptist Church is still alive and well, although I can't see you today live and in person, but it's good to be here, and uh, thank you so much for uh, choosing to be with us. I think last week we may have had a little bit of technical difficulty because so many churches we're trying to live stream their service. At one time, I've been told that Facebook really was just bogged down. So if that happens today, and I certainly hope it does not, I think Chief's going to have a link on the uh, Facebook Live. If it starts going in and out like it did last week, just uh, click over to that Facebook Live direct link, and I think that should alleviate the problem. But hopefully we won't have to deal with that today. And uh, they also wanted me to tell you, that after the service today, uh, the service will be loaded onto YouTube. So we'll be having Facebook Live, and then you can go back and watch later if you so choose. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, Brother Roy just gave us a wonderful Sunday school lesson from the book of Romans about the benefits of justification. And it was a great word, and it encouraged my heart. And I want to just remind everyone, Brother Roy is sitting over here, and uh, we have... Uh, our offering that we always do at this time, right after I make my announcements, I call for the ushers and they pass around the offering plate. Well, there's no ushers here today and several have asked me what they can do about their giving, their tithes and their offering. So if you want to, the best way probably during this time uh, to uh, get those uh, gifts out would just be to mail them to Victory Baptist Church. That is 15 Hendricks Road. Uh, Rock Mart, Georgia, 30153. That is probably the best way. This past week, there have been people that have actually come by the church office and dropped those off. That's fine. The church office is going to be open from uh, Monday to Thursday, approximately 9 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And we're going to have some uh, online giving opportunities. We'll be saying more about that the next few weeks. So you remember that and you pray about your giving during this time. I'm going to say a prayer and after I pray, one of our great singers here at the church, Chris Barker, is going to come and he's going to bless us with two songs today and then I'm going to be preaching uh, from the book of Hebrews today. So good to see you. If it's not face to face, at least I can see you out there uh, watching maybe and you can see me at least anyway. So it's good to be here today and let me pray and then Chris is going to sing. Lord, we do love you, and God, I miss my church family today. I miss getting to see their smiles. Uh, I miss getting to see their faces. I miss seeing the children. I miss seeing the choir behind me as they sing praises unto you. God, I miss all of that. And sometimes maybe we have taken the assembling of ourselves together. Maybe we've taken that for granted. Maybe we miss times when we shouldn't have missed and God, we just miss it now. So we've said so many times we don't have to come to church. We get to come to church. And God, right now, unfortunately, we don't even get to come to church. And it bothers me and it bothers so many. But God, we're going to do the best thing that we can today. We're going to gather together on this uh, technology uh, post. And God, we just pray that people will tune in and God, that they will uh, hear what God has to say and Lord, we pray for all of our people today that you keep them safe. Lord, we pray for those that work in the medical profession. We appreciate what they're doing. Those doctors and nurses and God, those that are in the hospitals and they're working tirelessly around the clock, it seems. And Lord, I just pray that you'd bless them, keep them safe, watch over their families. And Lord, we pray for the ones that are making very important decisions during this crucial time. And God, I'm going to pray. In fact, I'm just going to ask you, God, that the coronavirus would just be sent away, that it would just go away forever. And God, we pray that the cases would decrease. And God, we pray that people might recover and God, that they might be healed. We love you. Thank you, God, that we can come together today via Facebook Live. We love you and we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Brother Chris, you come and sing. Time pre 
preacher in a small town church bows his head to pray. Early morning echoes off the empty walls in that sacred place. In a few short hours this room will be filled up with desperate souls. And he's begging God to tell him what they need to know When a still small voice says Tell them that I love them That I died to set them free Tell them there's an answer For everything they need Tell them there's forgiveness And there's hope and suffering the truth never gets old, so say it again and again. Tell them that I love them. Tell them. He thinks about Charlie who just said goodbye to his bride of 50 years. Nathan and Katie still praying for a baby through empty arms and tears. This is where they're running to find a little peace inside their pain. And he's pleading with the Savior for the words to say when a still small voice says, Tell them that I love them, that I died to set them free. Tell them there's an answer for everything they need. Tell them there's forgiveness and there's hope and suffering. The truth never gets old, so say it again and again. Just tell them that I love them. Tell them grace is still amazing and there's power in the blood. And the old rugged cross is still enough. God for anything and no matter what we're going through today we know that he is on the throne and it is a wonderful blessed thing to know that he can take care of all of our needs amen how blessed it is to be his child to know my soul will never die To feel God's nearness every day Enjoy His grace all along the That he hears my prayer. 
prayers His ear turns to my cries My cares Now who on earth Has power today To take my burdens All away How blessed that His love for me Was stronger when I'll feel and look back to God God's peace. No one has ever loved me so He proves He could not music and the great message in those songs and Chris is one of my favorite singers and thank you for using your gift today. Well I'm going to ask that you take your copy of God's Word now and be finding with me the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews in just a few moments I want to read just one verse of scripture into your heart and into your hearing, I want us to look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. They will put this verse on the screen. In fact, they're going to put several verses on the screen today, but many of you are kind of like myself. You like to have an actual literal Bible in your hand, and you like to turn pages. So uh, you, you, you take your copy of God's Word now and... We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12. Some of you have an app on your phone or your uh, device. And some of you may just want to follow along on the screen. But however you choose to do it, I want you to see these verses straight from the pages of God's holy word. Over the past few weeks, it seems like the Holy Spirit has redirected me to some of these familiar well-known Bible passages. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 is very familiar and very well-known. As we read it in just a few moments, many of you will recognize it. Two weeks ago, it was the first time that I stood in this place before an empty auditorium. And again, that breaks my heart. But on that day, I shared with you from John chapter 14. You remember what our Lord says in John 14 and verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then in verse number 6, Jesus goes on to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The way to get to God the Father is to go through God the Son. And then last week, we were in the 23rd Psalm. And we love Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. On Wednesdays, the past few weeks, I've been giving a devotion and I've been videoing that and trying to post it and get it out. Now on Wednesday nights, we've been showing some of our past services and that way you have the choir and you have the message. But also on Wednesday, I've been giving a, a short Bible devotion, 15 minutes or so. And we looked at Romans 8, 28. That is a very appropriate verse for this time. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. This past Wednesday, we looked at Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Again, are very appropriate in this hour. The Bible says, be careful for nothing. That is, be anxious for nothing. Be stressed about nothing. Worry about nothing. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the Bible says, when you worry about nothing and pray about everything, verse seven, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we also mention Philippians 4.13. You know this verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.19, you know this verse also. But my God shall supply all your need according to to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I say amen. So today again, the Holy Spirit has directed me to a very familiar, recognizable, well-known verse. I want us to read it together now. Notice with me Hebrews chapter 12 and verse two. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now let me just share that verse again. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now I want to call your attention to that part of verse 2 that says, Jesus endured the cross. Look at it. Who for the joy that was set before him, our Lord, endured the cross. The cross. With that thought in mind, I want to speak for just a little while. If God would help me on this subject, the cross in a crisis. The cross in a crisis. I wonder today, what do you do when you find yourself in a crisis? I will talk about the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ during a time of crisis. This past week, we have heard more and more about the COVID-19 coronavirus. They are calling it a local crisis, a statewide crisis, a national crisis, an international crisis. Crisis. In fact, it has been called an epidemic. Some have said it is a global pandemic. And we can all agree today that it is a crisis. So what do you do when you find yourself in a crisis? Hear me. Look 
to the cross. What do you do when, when you find yourself in the middle of a crisis? Run to the cross. What do you do when you are in the midst and the throes of a global crisis? Cling to the cross. The songwriter said it this way. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Now I want to talk to you today for just a while on that subject, the cross in a crisis. The American Red Cross was established here in the United States in 1881 by a woman named Clara Barton. And Clara Barton was a medical nurse who had taken care of soldiers during the Civil War. But the Red Cross had actually started even further back in 1859. There was a Swiss merchant named Henri Dunant. And Henri Dunant visited North Italy during a war time and he was on his way to visit Napoleon III, the emperor of France. And while on his way to visit Napoleon III, Henri Dunant found himself right in the middle of a war. He was on a battleground, in fact, he just happened to stumble upon the French army fighting against the Austrian army. And before Henri de Nantes were thousands and thousands of soldiers from both armies who had perished in that awful battle. Also, there were many soldiers who were critically wounded who would later die. And Henri Dunant just happened to be an onlooker and he watched this awful scene unfold before his eyes. And he noticed that there was no one to care for the wounded and the dying. No one was there to have compassion, to give help, to, to give medical assistance or to reach out. And over 45,000 men died in that battle. Well, Henri Dunant was so troubled by that. He was so bothered and so perplexed by the horrible scenes that he saw. He went back home to Switzerland and he wrote a book about it and he began to write proposals and from his work in 1863, the Worldwide Red Cross was formed. And it was an organization that would take care of soldiers during wartime. It was an organization that would have compassion for those who had been wounded. They would reach out. They would give help and medical assistance. And one of the first things that they did was to come up with a universal symbol for medical assistance, and you know what it was? It was a red cross. A red cross with a white background. And still today, that symbol of a red cross on a white background is the emblem for someone who cares, someone who has compassion, someone who will reach out, someone who will help, and someone who will give medical assistance during a time of crisis. Even today in the year 2020, during the time of catastrophe and natural disaster and death and carnage, one of the first organizations that will usually arrive is the Red Cross. And you can almost always count on the Red Cross during the time of crisis. But I want to say today, ladies and gentlemen, long before the Red Cross was the blood red cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to say today, there is someone who cares. 
There is a compassionate Savior. There is someone who will reach out. There is someone who will give help and assistance. So I want to talk today about the cross during a time of crisis. Now let, let's think about the cross. God's plus sign in a minus world. The cross where he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. The cross where man was at his worst, but God was at his best. The cross where rags and riches come together. The cross where justice called and mercy answered. The cross where the law of God and the grace of God met. The cross where heaven and hell had a head-on collision and King Jesus came out the victor. The cross where our Lord stretched out his arms around the whole wide world and said, I love you this much. Today, I want us to consider the cross of Christ. I want us to think about the cross of the lovely Lord Jesus. Brother Chris, think about a cross. There is a vertical beam that is up and down. There's a horizontal beam that stretches outward. So I thought about that. We have a cross above us that reaches all the way to God in heaven. We have a cross around us that reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth. We have a cross below us that snatches us from the fiery flames of hell. So today I, I want us to, to think about the cross during a time of crisis. And I just want to make four statements real quickly from Hebrews 12 verse 2. It's all found in verse 2 and then, then I'm going to be done. Number one, first of all, I want us to think about the focus of the cross. The focus of the cross. Go back and notice verse number two. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. So Brother Roy, we are to focus and fix our eyes on the cross of Jesus. Now, in, in verse number two, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, but in the verse right before it, Hebrews 12, verse one, the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So the picture here is that of an athletic activity, an athletic endeavor. And there is an athlete, probably a runner, probably a long distance runner, a marathon runner. Now, I've never been in a marathon, probably never will. But I would just imagine that a marathon runner would probably not wear a long coat. He probably would not wear a backpack. He probably would not wear boots upon his feet. He would get rid of anything that would weigh him down, anything that would load him down. He would, he would get rid of any distraction that would bind or fetter. So he would take his eyes off of any distraction and fix his eyes and focus his eyes on the finish line. He would, he would focus on the prize before him and the goal. May I say, Christian believers, we are in a marathon. It's not a sprint, but it's a long distance marathon. And we are to get rid of anything that weighs us down. Time out. This past week, the Holy Spirit said to me, during this time, when you're home and you're not going as much, what is it that God would have you to repent of? Now that's amen or that's oh me. And I thought, Lord, is there something in my life 
that I need to examine? Is there something that I need to let go? Is there something that I need to get rid of? The Bible says that we are to lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run, keep our focus, keep our eyes upon the cross of the Lord Jesus. So I want to say it again. It's the focus of the cross. We are to look at the cross of Christ and the Christ of the cross. Now there have been many crosses before the cross of Christ. There were many crosses after the cross of Christ. There were men who died on crosses before Jesus did. In fact, the day that Jesus died on the cross, there were two criminals. One man on either side of the Lord Jesus. There have been men to die on a cross after Jesus died. But hear me, there's something very special about the cross in the middle. For you see, when Jesus hung on the cross, not only was a man on the cross, God was on the cross. And guess what? Not only was Jesus on that cross, not only was a man on that cross and God on that cross, I was on that cross. You were on that cross. Pastor, is that what the Bible teaches? It is. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ which lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and, and gave himself for me. See, Jesus not only died for me, he died as me. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So I want to encourage you, Victory Baptist Church, and all those that are watching today, focus on the cross. Look to the cross during a time of crisis. I remember reading this story many, many years ago and it had such an impact on my life and I've shared it from this pulpit before, no doubt, but I want to tell this story again. It's the story of a little seven-year-old boy and this little seven-year-old boy lived long ago and kind of like it was when I was growing up, you could go outside and play all day and no one thought anything about it. You could be gone from home almost all day and no one really thought anything about it. And such was the case with this little seven-year-old boy. He lived in a neighborhood and, and he would go off and sometimes he would be two or three blocks from home, but he was always able to find his way back home. But on this particular day, it was starting to get late and the little boy began to realize that maybe he had wandered too far away from home. He looked around and he didn't recognize any of his surroundings. And then that little boy began to, to understand that he was lost and he couldn't find his way back home. And he was afraid, he was frightened, he was fearful, he was scared. And that little seven-year-old boy began to weep uncontrollably. He began to cry. All of a sudden, a police officer drove by and saw that scene and said, Son, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And he said, I'm lost. I can't find my way home. And the police officer said, What's your name, little boy? And the little boy said, My name is Bobby. He said, Well, Bobby, what's your address? Where do you live? And Bobby said, I haven't learned my address yet. I don't know. He said, well, what is your phone number? He said, I haven't learned my phone number yet. I, I don't know. And he just began to weep and cry because he was lost and he could not find his way home. The police officer said, well, son, why don't you get inside my police car and, and we'll drive around the neighborhood until we find your house. So that's what they did. And for several minutes, they were driving 
through the neighborhood and the little boy was still afraid. He looked around and didn't recognize any of his surroundings. And then it happened. It was almost dark and the little boy spotted the neighborhood church. He knew that church well. It was a big church. And on top of that church was a big steeple and it was all lit up. And at the very top of the steeple was a tall cross. And the little boy began to dry the tears from his eyes and he had a smile to come on his face and he was excited and he said to the police officer, Sir, if you'll take me to the cross, I can find my way home. If you'll take me to the cross, I'll be able to find my way home. Oh, show me the cross. I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, the way of the cross leads home and keep your eyes on the cross. Even during a time of crisis, fix your gaze upon the cross of Calvary. Number one, we see the focus of the cross. But then secondly, number two, we see the faith of the cross. The faith of the cross. See, we focus on the cross and we place our faith in the cross. Go back and look at verse number two. Looking unto Jesus, here it is, the author and finisher of our faith. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the author of our faith. That is, he's the originator of our faith. He's the source of our faith. All the faith that you have, you get it from God. Our faith begins with God. It comes from God. It is a gift from God, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, he's the author of that faith. And the Bible teaches that we are made right with God when we place our faith in his son, Jesus Christ. We come into a right relationship with the holy God when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible teaches, Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So not, not only does God give us this gift of faith, it's that gift of faith that allows us to come into a right relationship with him. He is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. Listen to Romans chapter four and, and verse number three. Romans four, verse three. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham believed God. He trusted God. He put his faith in God and it was counted to him as righteousness. That's what I'm about to say. Somebody says, Pastor, how are people in the Old Testament saved the same way people in the New Testament are saved? By grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. They were looking ahead to the cross. We look back to the cross, Romans chapter 12 and verse number three. The, the, the last part of, of this verse says, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So think about it, Chris. We are right with God when we put our faith in him. And who is the one that gives us this faith? It comes from God. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, that word finisher, it means the completer of our faith, the perfecter of our faith. Let me make a confession. You're looking at a pastor today who does not have perfect faith. Now, he's perfecting my faith, but it's not 
perfect faith, yeah, because sometimes my faith is weak. Sometimes my faith is small. Sometimes my faith is shaky. God is working on my faith this past week, just like all of you. I watched all the media coverage of the coronavirus crisis. And let me just give you a word of advice here. Be informed, but don't be over-informed. Don't watch every single newscast from every single broadcast. You'll go slap crazy. And don't stay on social media all day long. You'll go slap crazy. But I heard the reports just like you did, and it broke my heart. The land that I love, the nation where I've always lived, the United States of America, now has more cases of the coronavirus. We have surpassed China and Italy and we are number one worldwide in reported COVID-19 cases. And it's right here in Georgia. In fact, it's right here locally in our backyard. It's in Polk County and Floyd County and Bartow County and Carroll County, and all the other surrounding counties, and usually it's some other faraway place where it happens. And maybe it doesn't really grab our attention so much. But this time, it's right here where we live. And as I heard that report, I'm just going to be honest, this is my humanity, I felt panic. I felt fear well up on the inside. I've been preaching against fear lately and guess what? It happened to me. And the uncertainty, the unknown, the hypothetical scenarios, what if, what if, what if, and I'm ashamed to admit that at that very moment, panic, anxiety, fear began to settle in my spirit. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and this is what he said. You can believe God. You can trust God. Either you're gonna believe God or you're not. Either you're gonna trust God or not. You can put your faith in God like you always have. You can either have faith or not. So at that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke such a sweet peace to my spirit. And almost immediately, the fear began to subside. And the panic began to go away. And I want to say, friend, he is the author of my faith, but he is the perfecter of my faith. He's still working on me. We're in Hebrews chapter 12, the previous chapter, Hebrews 11, is the Bible's faith chapter. Sometimes it's called the Hall of Fame of Faith, all those Old Testament characters, those men and women of faith. And Hebrews 11 verse one gives us the Bible definition for faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Paul said we walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11 and verse six but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, Victory Baptist Church, today we have two options. We can operate in fear or we can operate in faith. Faith and fear can't really coexist and we can have faith and please God or we can have fear and displease God. There's a song that we used to sing in the church. We still do sometimes. It's a wonderful, blessed old hymn. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by Faith, 
I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. Oh, child of God, put your faith in the cross of Jesus. Even during a time of crisis, I want to have overcoming faith. Listen to 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Listen to verse 4. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Brother Chris, I want to have that overcoming faith that is able to overcome the world. I wrote it down this way. Don't be overcome. Be an overcomer. Can I say that again? Don't be overcome with all the stuff today. Don't be overcome with a crisis. Don't be overcome with the news media. Don't be overcome with the reports. Don't be overcome with fear and anxiety. But be an overcomer when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Well, the cross in a time of crisis. Number one, we see the focus of the cross. Number two, the faith of the cross. Number number three, the foundation of the cross. The foundation of the cross. A foundation is something that you build upon. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Think about it, beloved. The cross is one of the basic tenets of what we believe and hold dear. The foundation of our doctrine and our theology is is the cross. You take the cross out of Christianity and there is no Christianity. And the very symbol of Christianity all across this world is a cross. I want to say, friend, it is the blood-stained banner. Look to the cross. My favorite verse in this entire Bible, someone told me there's over 31,000 Bible verses in the Word of God. I don't know. I've never counted them all. But I was told uh, that there are 31,000. And my favorite of all those Bible verses is Galatians 6, 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross. Let me read it this way. But God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, notice this part. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. As I read that, I thought, Lord, you counted it joy to go to the cross? Surely there was no joy as nails were driven in his hands and his feet. Our Lord was stapled to a tree. There's no joy in that. There's no joy in them taking a crown of thorns and crushing it upon his head. There's no joy in that. There's no joy in them plucking the beard from his face. There's no joy in them gambling for his garments. There's no joy in being lashed with a cat of nine tails. There's no joy in being beaten to a bloody pulp. So what is the joy that was set before him that made him endure the cross? He endured the penalty of sin so that you'll never have to. He took the punishment of sin so that you'll never have to. He made the payment of sin so that you'll never have to. Hear me, he took my beating, my scourging, my whipping. He took my death. That's the joy of the cross. 
the foundation of the cross. And then verse 2 says, despising the shame. Despising the shame. Oh, there was shame that day. As Jesus died on the cross, he became my sin. He became your sin. The collective sin of the world, past, present, and future, was loaded on Jesus and we are shameful sinners and he became our sin. Listen to Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree. And, and they took Jesus' body off the tree. But thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. Notice this. For he that is hanged is accursed of God. Jesus became the curse. Listen to Galatians 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written in the Old Testament, cursed is every one that hangs on a tree. And Jesus became our curse. We've seen the pictures and the portraits of our Lord Jesus hanging on the cross and he always has a loincloth and I understand why they, why they do that. I, I understand that. But according to the Bible, more than likely, Jesus was stripped naked. Jesus was stripped naked. He was stripped bare before God and man. Do you see the shame in the cross? In mockery, Roman soldiers took a placard, a sign King of the Jews and placed it above his head to ridicule him and laugh and, and scorn. Theologians call this substitutionary atonement. Jesus was our substitute on the cross. Let me see if I can illustrate this. Brother Roy, you mentioned some of this in your lesson today. That day at Calvary, Jesus was there. I was there. You were there. And on heavenly bookkeeping terms, on heavenly accounting terms, Jesus had nothing but credit on his account. He's the holy, righteous God. And Jesus had nothing but credit on his account. Chris, you and I, and Roy and Reba, sorry Reba, but it's you too. Preston, Rick, Chief. All we had on our account was debt. Debt. There was a payment before us and we couldn't pay it. We didn't have the funding to do it. The wages of sin is death. All Jesus had in his account was credit. All we had in our account was debt. But something miraculous happened. When we could not get to God, God came down to us. And Jesus walked over to me that day at Calvary and he gave me his credit. And he took my and at the cross, the great exchange took place. I give him my disgrace. He gives me his grace. I give him my anxiety. He gives me his peace. I give him my rebellion. He gives me his mercy. I give him my heartache. He gives me his joy. I give him my hatred. He gives me his love. I give him my sickness. He gives me his healing. I give him my sin. And he gives me his son. That's substitutionary atonement. And that is enough to make a Presbyterian turn a cartwheel. That is enough to make a Baptist shout. Look 
to the cross. What are we going to do, preacher? We're in a crisis. Are you kidding me? We're going to do what we've been doing. We're going to look to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's our foundation. Colossians 2.14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. I want to say today, the debt has been canceled. The debt has been erased, paid in full by the blood of the lamb. Well, I'm done here. Number one, we see the focus of the cross. Number number two, we see the faith of the cross. Number three, the foundation of the cross. Lastly, the future of the cross. The future of the cross. The cross gives me a future. Go back and look at verse two. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Here it is. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus died on a cross and he was in a tomb for three days. He was buried. On the third day, he came back to life. He's alive, he's living, he's risen, he's resurrected. He was on this earth for some 40 days and then Jesus took a flight and went back to heaven. The Bible says that he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high and I can't wait. One day we're going to heaven and we'll worship the one who is on the throne. But I want to leave you with these verses then we'll pray. Psalm 103, verses 1, 2, and 3. You know the first two verses but I want you to hear verse 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Now notice verse three. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. I think that's a sin debt. I think that's the disease of sin. But but isn't that a wonderful verse? who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. So if you're watching today and you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, Trust him. Believe in him. The Bible says you confess Jesus with your mouth. Call him Savior. Call him Lord. And you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And the Bible says if you'll do that, that you will be saved. So Victory Baptist Church and anybody else that's watching today, keep your eyes on the cross. Even during a time of crisis. Can we pray together? Lord, thank you for the cross. God, that's it. That's the message of the Bible. The Old Testament is pointing us to the cross. The New Testament is proclaiming the cross. Hallelujah for the cross. And I'm glad the way of the cross leads home. And God, when I make it to heaven one day, I will not be able to brag about any ability or talent or gift or skill. I will not be able to brag that I'm a pastor or a preacher. I will not be able to brag about anything that I've ever done. But I will say I have come this way by the way of the cross. I've come by the way of the cross. It's nothing in my hand I bring, but simply to the cross I cling. So God, I understand. It's happened to me just this past week. For just a brief moment, I got overwhelmed with fear. But the Bible talks about overcoming faith. God, I don't want to be overcome by fear. I want to be overcome with faith. And God, there are people today that maybe are scared. They're, uh, they're, they're doubting. They're uncertain. And God, there's just such confusion and chaos in our world today. I would say, child of God, there is a cross even during this time of crisis. And you look to the cross, you run to the cross, you cling to the cross 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the cross. God, you shed your blood to clean us up and make us white as snow. God, to heal us from all of our diseases. And I'm glad there is a cure. There is a remedy. There is a panacea. There is a universal blood. And God, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord. Amen and amen. Hey, thank you for watching today. And uh, please be safe. And we're supposed to continue social distancing. I don't think I've been anywhere close to anyone today uh, trying to, to go by the uh, uh, mandates that's been given. And that's just to be safe. And uh, we're praying for you. We miss seeing you. We love you. Uh, give me a call this week. If you uh, need something, we'll try our best to do that. We've got some uh, deacons that are doing exactly what the Bible teaches. They're servants. They're making some contacts, and I want to do that also. So thank you, Victory Baptist Church. Uh, help us share this. Someone was telling me about a watch party. I don't know if you had to do that live, but you can do a watch party. I don't know if you can do it now. I'll have to find out about that. But you can share. Hit the share button, and we want this broadcast to go out, okay? Keep your eyes on Jesus and focus on the cross. God bless you, and thank you for watching.